tonight underwater and overwhelmed. Fierce flooding slams communities on both sides of the border. Rising anxiety in parts of Quebec. It was a system that's coming out of the U.S. And devastating scenes across multiple states. Nike Canada and Dynasty Gold accused of benefiting from forced labor in China. It is kidnapping and hostage taking and it is part of the indoctrination. The Uyghur workforce and the start of an unprecedented investigation. Plus cracking down on magic mushrooms. Of course we will apply the law. Forced to close on opening day and the growing calls for legalization. It's better for me. CTV National News with Omar Sachedina. Good evening, everyone. The brute force of nature is testing the resolve of millions across North America tonight. The brunt of the catastrophic weather pounding the U.S. The capital of Vermont submerged with some of the worst flooding in nearly 100 years. Air rescues are taking place in areas where boats and trucks can't get in. Roads and bridges buckled, train tracks dangling with nothing left to support them. And this is what it looked like in L.A. County, a devastating landslide that swept away at least a dozen homes. You can actually hear the snap, crackle and pop every minute when you're there. In parts of Quebec, torrential rain has flooded entire communities, forcing hundreds from their homes. Some roads so badly damaged, it's impossible to assess the extent of the devastation. And that is where we begin tonight with CTV's Quebec Bureau Chief Genevieve Beauchemin on the rising threat. Rescue crews search flooded zones in Quebec to find anyone in danger. This after slow-moving storms crossing parts of the province dumped staggering amounts of water. The lake went up 30 centimeters in a flash, says Yvon Bourassa, the mayor of the small town of La Cossade. It was unbelievable. Overflow and runoff collapsed roads, set off landslides, and threatened homes like Pierre Provencher. Firefighters came and dumped all these bags of sand, he says. Hopefully that will be enough. Fears of the swollen river overflowing led Saint-Brigitte de Laval north of Quebec City to declare a state of emergency. It was a system that's coming out of the U.S. and it was absorbing a lot of moisture from the Gulf of Mexico and also from the Atlantic. And that's why we've seen so much rain. That system left a trail of destruction south of the border. Cars washing away, businesses and homes filling up with water. One person, Pamela Nugent, was killed. Her father witnessed the tidal wave washing her away. She panicked again and she just grabbed the dog, came out here. As soon as she hit the road, the water hit her, she just took her down. Two seconds, she was gone. Damage to roads, rail lines, bridges and private property is extensive. Make no mistake. The devastation and flooding we're experiencing across Vermont is historic. Rivers are slowly receding, and Montpelier, Vermont's capital, lifted an emergency order closing the downtown core for hours. But a dam is still under watch near capacity and threatening to break. Rain has stopped for now, too, in Sherbrooke, in the eastern townships region of Quebec. But it endured more than a month's worth of rain in a single day, nearly 140 millimeters. A campground was evacuated and hundreds of other residents were forced from their homes. A necessary precaution, said the mayor. Avant, Climate change has made storms less predictable. Our models no longer work like before, says Evelyne Baudin. And the concern is more heavy rain is expected in days to come that will fall on already saturated ground. Geneviève Beauchemin, CTV News, Montreal. A storm of a different kind at the NATO summit in Lithuania today. Ukraine's president blasted leaders of the powerful military alliance. He is eager to join. They want Ukraine in the club, but aren't saying when. CTV's Kevin Gallagher reports from the high-stakes summit. Mr. Volodymyr Zelensky. Dressed in familiar army green, Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky greeted NATO friends at the gala dinner, even though earlier he slammed the alliance for not giving Ukraine a timeline for membership. In a tweet, he called it unprecedented and absurd. Yeah. 
Zelensky and the idea of NATO granting Ukraine full membership is extremely popular in Lithuania, where the leader received a flag with bullet holes from the Lithuanian president. It had flown on a Ukrainian tank during the Battle of Bakhmut. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau is also supportive, but agrees there should be strings attached. We're so glad to see uh, everyone coming together on a clear path uh, for Ukrainian accession uh, to NATO uh, when conditions allow. One of those conditions is an end to the war. And Secretary General Jens Stoltenberg says there are democratic and anti-corruption requirements the country needs to meet as well. We also made clear that we will issue an invitation for Ukraine to join NATO when allies agree and conditions are met. A main goal of this summit is to lay out security guarantees to Ukraine. NATO members are pledging continued financial and military support for Ukraine to reclaim its territory from Russian invaders. Still, there are concerns that even the mention of a membership offer could provoke Russia to escalate the devastating conflict. Well, I'm sure that Russia doesn't want uh, Ukraine and NATO. That's for certain. Um, but at some point, uh, I hope they won't have a choice. Some of these issues could be worked out tomorrow when NATO hosts its first Ukraine council. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau will also have a meeting with President Zelensky. Omar? All right, Kevin Gallagher again in the Lithuanian capital tonight. Kevin, thanks. A first of its kind investigation in this country is looking at whether Nike Canada and mining company Dynasty Gold benefited from forced labor in China, specifically from Uyghur Muslims. CTV's Judy Trin reports. The allegations are that Nike Canada and mining company Dynasty Gold used Uyghur workers taken from their homes in Xinjiang province by Chinese authorities. Some of them, able people, young or around 40, 50 years old, picked up by Chinese government and scattered all across China and put them in various manufacturing or other facilities to work under the semi-military control. Human Rights Watch estimates nearly 2 million Muslims, the majority of them Uyghurs, are in detention camps. But it's unknown how many are subjected to forced labor. And that is part of the genocide uh, determination. 28 advocacy groups filed complaints. Then Canada's corporate ethics watchdog launched an investigation after the two companies did not provide the information requested by the ombudsman. What we will do is engage a professional investigator, an investigator who um, is, is steeped in business and human rights um, in the Xinjiang area and has the language, the contextual language to be able to, to review documents and do interviews. Dynasty Gold called the allegations unfounded. It said the allegation made about forced labor arose more than 10 years after Dynasty ended its exploration operation in Xinjiang. Nike did not respond to a request for comment, but earlier this year they told the ombudsman that their ongoing diligence has not found evidence of employment of Uyghurs. If we find that there are, that they have benefited from Uyghur forced labor, we will make recommendations on how they can uh, change their, their um, operations and their behavior in the future uh, to, to be more responsible. Depending on the outcome of the investigation, the ombudsman can recommend fines. But Omar, this goes beyond Nike Canada and Dynasty Gold. There are similar complaints about 11 other Canadian companies. Potentially far-reaching implications. All right, Judy, thank you. One-time fashion mogul Peter Nygaard now faces sexual assault charges in three provinces, including his home province of Manitoba. Nygaard was charged by Winnipeg police today after a second opinion of the evidence in an alleged incident 30 years ago at Nygaard's corporate headquarters. There are similar criminal charges against him in Quebec and Ontario, and police in the U.S. want him extradited to face sex trafficking charges there. The 81-year-old has been in custody in Toronto since December 2020. The city of Winnipeg has officially filed an injunction to clear a blockade on the main road leading to a landfill where protesters have been gathered since Thursday. But at the end of the day, in, in my responsibility to the city of Winnipeg and the citizens of Winnipeg is to make sure that garbage continues to be collected and, and we can um, have access through that road. The blockade began after the province decided not to search a landfill for the remains of two murdered Indigenous women. A hearing on the application for the injunction is expected tomorrow morning. Winnipeg is also where the premiers met today. 
among the key concerns, the B.C. port strike. And there is late word tonight the Labour Minister has given a federal mediator 24 hours to provide recommendations on how to end the now 11-day-old impasse hammering the economy. The provincial leaders also discussed health care. Here is CTV's Manitoba Bureau Chief Jill Mackishon. As the Premier sat down for their second day of meetings... Keep it public! Keep it public! Outside loud demands to focus on health care. Not for sale! Growing concern that $46 billion in new health money may be used to patch a broken system with more private services. We want to see accountability to make sure that money stays in health care and helps the public system. The Winnipeg Free Press reporting Manitoba spent $60 million on private agency nurses last year. The aftershocks of the pandemic stretched health care workers to the limits. With hospitals overwhelmed and surgeries delayed, Winnipegger Mark Olfert was sent to Ontario for a new knee. And if he didn't go... I would have been waiting another two and a half years. And that is just unacceptable. Overtime hours are also eating up health dollars. In Alberta, one registered nurse made more than half a million dollars, much of it in overtime. We're attracting people in, we're burning them out, and they're leaving. That's the dynamic that we have to turn around. The premiers want the federal government to cut the red tape to help recruit more skilled workers in health care and other industries. We're in desperate need of people right across the province. The federal government has delivered $2 billion, a one-time top-up to the provinces and territories to clear surgical backlogs. But the bulk of the new health funding won't move until the provinces each provide a plan on how it will be spent. So far, none have, and Quebec still hasn't signed on to the health accord. Each deal is different. We want the money coming from the federal government to be uh, focused on our priorities. The health care discussions will continue. No date is set, but the premiers will meet again later this year to discuss and share ideas on how to recruit, retain and train health care workers. Jill Mackishon, CTV News, Winnipeg. Several provinces are seeing a rise in illegal psychedelic dispensaries as a growing body of research examines potential health benefits. CTV's Vanessa Lee on the mushrooming storefronts and the fresh efforts to shut them down. Police raided this Montreal magic mushroom dispensary hours after it opened, arresting four people. It's too soon uh, to say, uh, to confirm who, who was in there. Magic mushrooms contain a chemical known as psilocybin, a hallucinogen some research suggests can treat a variety of mental health disorders, including depression. Pierre is trying it for the first time in decades in hopes it will help with neck and back pain. I'm looking for something. It's possible. Uh, it's better for me. Currently, the production, sale and possession of magic mushrooms are illegal in Canada. Health Canada says while clinical trials with psilocybin have shown promising results, there are no approved therapeutic products. Currently, we apply for patients that are really uh, in dire need and Health Canada gives approval. Magic mushroom shops have sprung up across the country despite potential consequences. Owners arguing it is safer than buying the drugs off the street. Observers say the defiance reminds them of those who opened cannabis stores before they were legalized. For me, it's obvious that psilocybin will be recreationally accessible legally. Doctors warn doing the drug on your own without a professional is considered high risk. If someone does something in an unsupported environment, you know, these substances are amplifiers of, of our, our psyche and so you know it could definitely cause harm fun guys vows not only to reopen this store it plans to add as many as five more locations in the province this summer vanessa lee ctv news montreal coming up from complaints to compensation these rules really need to be nice and tight and simple proposed revisions to canada's air passenger bill of rights
The rules around compensation for air travelers are changing in Canada. New amendments to the passengers' rights charter are meant to toughen penalties on airlines and close loopholes, sometimes used to avoid paying up. CTV's Adrian Gobriel on the public consultations now taking off. Receiving compensation for a delayed or cancelled flight in Canada is a turbulent journey. The airlines have pretty good lawyers and they've been finding lots of reasons not to pay people. The Canadian Transportation Agency has a current backlog of 52,000 passenger complaints. Each case takes a minimum of 18 months to resolve. It's a caseload they hope to tackle with new regulations on the horizon. We're moving to uh, a system that will be clearer. Canada's air passenger protection regulations were rolled out in 2019. It lists three key categories for flight disruptions, which were recently eliminated by the federal government, forcing the transportation agency to simplify and improve the rules for traveler compensation. It's a move passenger advocates at CAA have been calling for. It's a long overdue um, acknowledgement by the government that the current system isn't working properly and that it needs to be fixed. The transportation agency has now launched a 30-day public consultation to clarify compensation guidelines when a flight is disrupted unless there are exceptional circumstances. What are those exceptional circumstances? Well, they haven't said yet. These rules really need to be nice and tight and simple if they're going to be effective. Airlines may end up having to prove that a flight delay was out of their control, closing a potential loophole. Does the Canadian Transportation Agency believe that there's been too much grey area in the current legislation for airlines to exploit? Eliminating or reducing the grey is, uh, is uh, one of the big objectives of these regulatory changes. The Canadian Transportation Agency tell us that travellers here in this country will have a clearer picture of their path towards potential compensation once the new details are finalized sometime this coming winter. Adrian Gobriel, CTV News, Toronto. In Washington, top executives from the PGA Tour got grilled by a Senate subcommittee about the proposed merger with Saudi-backed Live Golf. Today's hearing is about much more than the game of golf. It's about how a brutal, repressive regime can buy influence. Liv was poaching some of the PGA's biggest stars like Phil Mickelson and Brooks Kepka. Lawmakers concerned by the size of the deal involving one of the world's most repressive regimes. So what are the amounts that have been discussed? North of one billion. The Saudi government has a history of human rights abuses, including its connection to the death of journalist Jamal Khashoggi. The two sides have until the end of the year to reach an agreement. Still ahead, turning green out of the blue. Why the water in Toronto's new heart-shaped pond isn't feeling the love. Cracks in the largest organization of First Nations deepened today as the AFN General Assembly met for the first time since its national chief, Roseanne Archibald, was voted out. CTV's Atlantic Bureau Chief Chris Najgate on the day's disruptive developments. Ousted National Chief of the Assembly of First Nations, Roseanne Archibald, accused the AFN's executive of silencing her supporters today. It is a railroaded process that is unfair, that is not allowing... Uh, for accountability for the political coup. You didn't have the newly appointed interim national chief says the decision to remove Archibald, the organization's first woman chief, wasn't an easy one. And was a result of careful consideration by the leadership and, the and representatives of our nation. Calls to discuss Archibald's removal were rejected, with the AFN executive wanting to move forward. I think it uh, has been really disappointing the last two years that we should be doing the other work that we needed to do, uh, whether it was safe drinking water, housing, opioid crisis, climate change. It's about the people that we serve and they're looking to us for leadership, they're looking to us for help, they're looking to us for change. Archibald vowed to weed out financial mismanagement within the AFN, but was ousted last month after an HR investigation found five workplace misconduct complaints against her. It doesn't make a difference. Uh, whether it's a woman or a man, harassment is harassment. And, and to me, that's really, that exactly what should be guiding the decision. This chief says the AFN's process stonewalled what needed to be discussed. 
the message is, you know, just just be quiet, just stay quiet, don't voice out anything, don't do anything. Archibald said she may make an appearance in person this week, but now the AFN has blocked her from participating. The organization says it's focused on rebuilding trust, including addressing its financial audit later this week. Chris Nachkate, CTV News, Halifax. The best players in Major League Baseball were in Seattle tonight for the annual All-Star Game, but a lot of the talk today was still about the exploits of a Toronto Blue Jay. It's there it is. It's away. It's away. Vladdy Guerrero Jr. became the first Jay to win the home run derby, slugging 25 of them in the final round. His triumph came 16 years after his father, Vlad Guerrero Sr., won the event as a member of the California Angels. What a feat. Elsewhere, a Toronto park that opened less than three weeks ago does not appear to be a home run. This is what Love Park looked like after it opened in late June with crisp blue water in a heart-shaped pond. And this is what it looks like now, a scummy green color. The city says it's working on the problem and hopes to get it back to blue as soon as possible. After the break, the lake is going to become very famous if, if the proposal goes through. Taking a deep dive into an Ontario lake and the birth of the modern world. A small secluded Ontario lake has been chosen from a dozen sites around the world to represent a major tipping point in the planet's history. Here's CTV's John Vandevelli Rao. This lake southwest of Toronto is relatively tiny, but has some big things to say about how we humans have changed the earth. The lake is going to become very famous if, if the proposal goes through. The proposal, agreed upon today by a panel of geologists meeting in France, is to make Crawford Lake a global symbol of a new chapter in geologic time called the Anthropocene Epoch, which is hotly debated and something Canadian scientists have been pushing for. And it's so rewarding for us uh, to, to reach this goal today, that we've been working at this for five years. Researchers have been extracting from the lake annually frozen samples of the sediment that lies below. The lake is unique in that it's deep and undisturbed, and those samples have layers made up of whatever sank to the bottom each year, making up a record like tree rings. So we can count back. We can count back and we can identify any year you're interested in. The layers from the early 1950s show evidence of plutonium from the testing of atomic bombs. And there's signs of other human byproducts, pollution and industrialization. We're able to pick up this disturbance from Hamilton, the, the uh, steel mills. We're able to pick up the, the fossil fuel contaminants from the steel mills in the 1950s. Because of accelerating human activity, the scientists say, the Earth's rocks themselves are responding to those changes. And some think it marks the end of what's been called the Holocene Epoch, which goes back almost 12,000 years. And the new human-caused Anthropocene Epoch is well underway. In the sediment core, the boundary between the two can be seen. Several more groups of scientists still have to approve it all. But if they do, this Canadian lake may offer up a record for a long time to come of when we truly change the planet. John Benavelli Rao, CTV News, Toronto. Just fascinating. That's a snapshot of this Tuesday for all of us at CTV National News. Thank you for watching. Good night and see you tomorrow.